Hello, and welcome to OLA 2020. Thank you so much for joining us in this session, Early Literacy Starts Today. My name is Jennifer Terry, and I am this year's chair of the Children and Teen Services Roundtable. I'm so happy to moderate this session, and I am so glad that you have joined us today. We are joined by our session presenters, Valerie Kimball, Elizabeth Murray, Lauren Raphael, and Sharon Salmon. Valerie Kimball has been a children's librarian for over 40 years. She is a co-developer with Jenny Steinus of the Pioneer Library System's Grow Like a Read Early Literacy Program, which has been adopted by libraries across the U.S. and in Australia. Valerie is a longtime member of OLA, ALA, PLA. She lives in Norman and is employed by the Pioneer Library System as a children's materials selector, trainer, and storyteller. Elizabeth Murray has been the children's librarian at the Stillwater Public Library since 2012. Her favorite projects that she has implemented in Stillwater are the 1,000 Books Before Kindergarten program, Story Walk in the Park, and Toy and Maker Kits. Laura Raphael, with her Master of Art and Master of Library and Information Systems, has worked in public libraries for 18 years. While she is currently the Children's Service Coordinator for the Tulsa City County Library System, and was previously the youth librarian for the South Broken Arrow Library Branch. She spent nearly eight years working at the Central Library, co-founding the nationally known Your Next Great Read Reader's Advisory Service for Adult Readers. When Central closed for renovation in 2013, she was told, you worked with adults for a decade, so now you'll be doing baby story time. <laughs> Fortunately, she fell in love with children's services and is excited to be supporting TCCL staff in their programming efforts. She has published a number of articles in children and library, public, children libraries and public libraries, library journal, American libraries, and This Land Press. Sharon Solomon is past president and newsletter editor of Friends of the Library for Oklahoma Folio. She served as project principal for Folio's three-year $100,000 plus finance fitness grant, providing programs across the state for public libraries. She is Dean Emeritus, for, at Rose State College and has over 40 years experience as a librarian, including the children's librarian at an inner city library and bookmobiles. In addition to her library science degree, Sharon has an MBA in marketing and loves sharing the reading bug on Facebook for Folio and the South OKC Library. We'll be back at the end of the session with some questions and follow-up, but now I wanna turn it over to Elizabeth Murray. Thank you. All right, so I get to talk today about the 1,000 books before kindergarten at the Stillwater Public Library. As many may have heard about it, it's really been um, continuously growing in popularity, especially around Oklahoma. Back in 2016, when we were getting started, um, we were, I think, one of the first to really get it launched. So. Uh, we've been doing it for kind of a while, and I love talking about it, so let me tell you how we got going. So first, I have been hearing about it through various webinars and on various library blogs and things, and it was just kind of in the back of my mind. So when we had um, one of those times where somebody comes in and says, I have some money that we want to give you, what are your ideas? This was the first thing I asked my director if we could do. So that's how we kind of got started. I had you know, lightly been researching it, and I'll share some of those at the very end for people, knowing that um, at some point we would have the funding and we'd be able to jump for it. So we secured our funding through a local uh, donation. It was our Rotary uh, group that said they wanted to um, invest in the library, early literacy kids stuff, basically. They didn't really have a plan. So I was like, this is going to be amazing. And they were like, sure, go for it. So the next thing, once we secured our funding, is you have to really start thinking of, oh, you know, let me back up. If you haven't found out about what 1,000 Books Before Kindergarten is, it says it in its names. You're encouraging kids to read 1,000 books before kindergarten, and the library is there to support them. So back to that. Uh, record keeping. So to get to 1,000 books, you kind of have to know how you're getting there and um, when they got there. So what we did was... Uh, Nothing fancy, we created a simple Google form that was how we were keeping track of it and that you can have a paper that the uh, parents f uh, fill out. So each time you read a book, they just could mark it. There's even a free app that's nationwide. You don't have to have it connected to any library. Anybody can really pick it up. And so we 
wanted to keep it as super simple as possible. So it was just each 100 set of um, books read, people came back and told us, we marked it in our spreadsheet and they got a prize. We picked, specifically chose to do a prize for every 100 books um, recorded or told to us. And that was because our initial goal was to continue getting those families in the door we wanted them to make the library a regular habit. So we figured the more times they came in, the more times they were coming to get books, the more times they were incentivized to come in and tell us about their reading, that that would really set a foundation for being strong, regular library users. Um, so that's how we decided on our price structure. Uh, the initial price structure was at every 500 books and at the end at a thousand books, they would get a, pri a book of a prize, a book as their prize to keep. Um, so we thought that would be pretty incentivizing. And then along the way, we had um, some other various smaller prizes. I tried to match them up to the, um, the early literacy learning thoughts of, you know, sing, play, read, write, talk. So when there was, um, most of them would be under the play or sing um, or write. So like a small travel size crayons were extremely cheap, very easy to hand out. Um, bubbles are really good for, you know, play and also even talking about different early science things, you know, about how bubbles are made, what they look like, etc. Um, so that was really fun to buy. And because our funding all came in a big bunk bulk at the beginning, uh, I just bought a lot of stuff and um, I tried to make sure it was things that could keep for a long time. So we started in 2016. I am still working down all the prizes I had. So everything's still good um, to go. So that's been amazing. You do have to have storage space though if you're going to do something like that. And then um, for workflow, we wanted to make sure that this would be something super easy for all staff. So even if a children's um, staff member wasn't here, anybody on staff could help a patron with it. What we do is we hand, hand out a piece of paper that just gives a quick summary of how the program runs, saying, you know, you get registered. You track your reading with a paper blog, or you choose to go to that free app that we have linked in our website. Every book counts, even repeats. And all you have to do is return your reading logs to get a prize and pick the next one up and just uh, read, read, read. So we keep it all in a simple file cabinet where it just is listed each prize for each number. And then um, we just entered it into a spreadsheet. So it's really simple. It's been really easy to implement. Um, it was a little bit tricky probably the very first year that it overlapped with our summer reading program, just because that was the first time having two reading programs running at the same time. And we do have a lot of families that were so used to doing summer reading that they were signed up for both of them. We told them you could do both at the same time. You could take a pause of the thousand books, just focus on summer reading. We really leave it up to their family choice of how they want to um, handle that portion of it. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is advertising. So getting started was pretty easy to advertise because it was new. It was exciting. We were super excited about it. Um, we launched ours during National Library Week uh, just because that kind of gave us a target date. So that was really fun um, and exciting. The problem is this is an ongoing program that will continue really until you decide that maybe there's no interest or something else better suits your community. So there's a lot of um, needing to figure out how to maintain that momentum. Some various things that we do is occasionally post pictures of um, the kids uh, with their prizes when we get permission on our Facebook page. Um, our advertising also includes the kids get a circle with their name um, that we put on the wall and it kind of tracks their progress. Uh, that is in our story time room, and I'll have a picture of that on the next slide. Um, so that also helps new families kind of be like, oh, hey, what's that? And we can talk it up. And then anytime where, uh, you know, there's a little bit of nothing exactly that you need to be advertising on, maybe your social media or such, we'll uh, post a little something about 1,000 books before kindergarten. If we have a blank bulletin board, uh, we have some ready-to-go bulletin boards that we, are, we reuse, and so we'll throw those up every now and then. Um, so that's been one way that we kind of keep the momentum um, pretty soon. I think uh, as soon as we're somewhat back to a bit more normal, our plan is to kind of do a little bit of a make over the 
the view of it so that we can kind of have a new look and kind of relaunch it. So I think we'll probably have to kind of relaunch every, I don't know, seven, eight years just to kind of get that next set of families and kids interested. Some interesting things that we've been doing is trying to think of how to get outside the library. So one way we are doing it is I was just in the process of talking to some of our daycares and the Head Starts around here about doing a thousand books before kindergarten where they record it as the teachers for their entire class. So that instead of the parents who maybe don't have transportation or it's just really hard to get to the library when you have a small toddler um, can come or can still participate, but it's their teacher that's kind of tracking how much they're reading they're doing. And then we would just have that teacher distribute the prizes to the class as a whole. We were also just got another grant to go to some more outreach spots. And what we were gonna do there is we use some funds to um, buy more books so that by signing up, they would get a free book and get started on the way. Because some of those times when you're out at the outreach, you know, it's hard to know what you're really signing up for. The whole goal of this is to get young kids reading. So sometimes, you know, you gotta get that first book in the hands, make sure there's books in the homes and hope that, you know, they're like, okay, we need more books. Where do we get more books? Let's go to the library. So that's um, some of the things we had to get started with. Um, so just so you know, also known as things that maybe are surprises once you get started. Um, we, I was like, oh, this is gonna be so awesome. These young, the parents, they're always so excited. They want the best for their kids. So they're really gung-ho, especially when they're super tiny. They're gonna be like all over this and they're gonna just like blaze through this. Well, you know, it's also though true that young children are a lot of work. There's only so much you can keep up with, especially for tracking. So I was thinking we'd have way awesome completion rates right at the beginning. But then I realized, you know, in the end, it was about the same amount of completion rate as we had for our summer reading, which was getting up to about 40-ish percent. Um, so I would say that would probably track with your population, just kind of see how much you have for people that however you consider a completion rate for summer reading, that's probably what you'll get, which also means when ordering supplies, you'll definitely need a lot more if you're handing out things at the very front end for those 100, 200 books, because you'll have a lot for the end if you keep it all the same. Uh, my problem with that is we give out stickers saying, I've, I've read 100 books. Well, I ran out of those, I've read 100 books real easy, fast, so, um, and I have a lots of thousand books so just remember that i also bought a ton of board books because it's like 1000 books before kindergarten it's for the babies well they get a lot of four and five year olds and they don't want those board and baby books so remember to make sure it's not all board books that you'll be passing out and if you do pre-purchase um sheets uh the ones on demco which um i'm gonna pass on the backside was pretty much black and you could not read their names so you'll always want to have their names somewhere on it so you know who's bringing back your books so as you can see, here's the sheets where they just mark in each one. Uh, it's real simple. Uh, this is uh, one of our little ones who finished. Um, this is a one way that we like to mark it. We have these uh, laminated sheets that say, I've read a thousand books um, with the hashtag. She's holding the book she picked out from our book bin and her sticker is on her and her parent gave us permission for this. And she was actually really cute. She uh, had a uh, they were moving out of town, so they were determined to finish this before they moved out of town. <laughs> and, and you can also see uh, our thousand books before kindergarten wall of fame, as we like to call it, and it's nicely getting filled up. But as you can see, the 100 definitely has a lot, and there are some that have been on there for kind of a while that I probably need to start cleaning up. But our thousand books side is also really filling up nicely, which is lovely to see. And then here are our resource list. So there's a lot of great resources. Um, I definitely would suggest um, the webinar from Demco about uh, getting started. It's from 2015, but it should still all apply. And um, the Facebook groups or talking to other librarians around the state who have already done it are also um, great resources. So. I think it's a really fun, very simple project. As soon as you get, um, you know, that base funding in place, so you have your supplies, you just do a little bit of marketing and it really runs, your, runs itself. And um, it's been great for our community. I hope to at some point be able to advertise a little bit more. We're, uh, you know, currently evaluating how everything's gonna be working, but that's how it's been running for Stillwater. So 
I love talking about thousand books before kindergarten. I hope um, if you are thinking about doing it or just have some sort of interest or maybe want to just ask any questions, I'd love to hear from you. Feel free to email or call. Um, my contact will be at uh, listed in the conference and possibly at the end of this uh, presentation. All right, thank you. I believe it's my turn. Let's see. Um, all right. So um, I'm Laura Raphael. I'm glad I did that. I, I want to thank you for um, watching this. And, um, and I'm here to talk about the Tulsa City County Library, our early literacy program, which is called Build a Reader. Um, <clears throat> But first, I want to congratulate you on just just uh, uh, coming to this webinar um, and, and the OLA conference because wherever your library is in supporting early literacy, um, whether you're doing a thousand books before kindergarten or story time or just talking to parents and, and beefing up your collections, you understand that early literacy development is really important. There's just been such an explosion of research and knowledge in the last 20, 30 years. Um, showing us how important those early years are and helping kids develop their language and get ready for reading. And then there's a real opportunity for public libraries to come in and support that um, as, as an organization in the community that is, um, that can help parents and kids. Um, and I, I, I love, I love these programs because I love seeing what other, what other libraries uh, do. And I, I, that was, that was great, um, Jen, for seeing what you do at, this, at Stillwater. Um, so our Build a Reader program, oh yeah, there's my early literacy, darn, when you get that cute, cute kid, <laughs> laughing babies are learning babies. Um, so our, our program, Build a Reader, is uh, based on the Every Child Ready to Read um, Public Library Association Initiative, Parent Education Initiative. Um, it was started in 2004 and was revised in 2010. And really the key to every child ready to read is um, viewing early literacy as, uh, as something that parents and librarians and adults um, work together to help kids develop. Um, so it's just kind of changing that perspective. So while um, Tulsa City County Library and all librarians, we're really interested in connecting with kids. And I just have some, some of our great uh, librarians and library staff and kids, that's really important. Um, but um, our real audience is the people sitting in the back, are the parents and caregivers, the grandpas, the aunts, the uncles, moms and dads. Um, we really, uh, that's who we want to, to reach um, in, our, in our program. And just to illustrate this, uh, easier to tell a story than, than to try the research out, which, but I can do that too. Um, a couple years ago, we lost a children's associate um, the first week of summer reading program. <laughs> and uh, she had a lot of great story times um, scheduled. So I subbed for uh, about a month doing a couple story times a week. And I got to meet this wonderful family, Mo McKenna, that I'm holding there. Um, and her, her mom, Wendy, and uh, her newborn brother, Heath, and they came to every single story time, and it was so much fun to see and her participating more and more. But even more um, um, uh, exciting was the mother saying, you know, I, I just, I'm so excited to see uh, McKenna just blossom in her language. She's, she's talking more, she's singing the songs that you sing in, in story time, we're doing all of these things, she wants to read more books. And that was so satisfying. And I would love to say, oh, it's, so, it's me, I'm just such a great story time person. It, it, you know, I'm not bad, but it was actually, but the, the real, um, it, the, the real stuff came from the mother, from, from Wendy seeing it demonstrated and seeing how easy she could do that at home. And she, she started, she said she started talking more when she was making dinner. She started, they started singing songs in the car. They started doing all of these things and all of those hours that I didn't get to see McKenna, that the mother did. And that, that really shows the power 
I think of a robust early literacy program at a library is teaching parents. Um, it's what we're trying to achieve with the Build a Reader program. We target parents and caregivers to support them as they help their babies and young children develop literacy, literacy skills, knowledge, and motivation. Because we get them at most half hour, an hour a week in story time, parents and caregivers have way more hours. So if we can reach the parents, so we're still reaching the kids, we're still connecting with the kids, but we're making sure that we're also talking to the parents and caregivers. Um, so uh, the uh, Every Child Ready to Read, the original program focused on six early literacy skills. Those still exist. The revision focused on the five activities. It's talk, sing, read, write, play. And um, that's an old uh, poster. We, we changed it. So it's talk, sing, read, write, play because we every um, single story time we um, talk about each of those five activities. And a lot of story times we sing the song um, where we put their hands out and talk, sing, read, write, play, 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 yay. Um, and normally I would have all of you do that with me. Um, it's way more fun when we're all together in a group. I've made our, my library commissioners sing it. I've made my library leadership team sing it. But that's, those are just really, those are the important skills, um, activities that, um, that can connect with parents that makes it easier for them. Um, I do want to mention, we've got really great artwork. I have, uh, our creative director, we're really, really fortunate at Tulsa City County Library. She's an artist with a capital A. It, and it looks great, but that's not what's important. What's important is the content. What's important um, is, is the Every Child Ready to Read um, activities that we're focusing on. Um, so there, and, and so it is Every Child Ready to Read, but we called it, we call it Build a Reader. That's our brand. And there are three parts to our program, which we started in 2017. One is an online program for our tech parents who love the mobile app or want to use a computer and um, track um, uh, their activities, the talking, singing, reading, writing, playing, and getting a printed piece. If they don't want the online, the, the printed option is a bookmark. And we just have um, a series of activities under each talk, sing, read, write, play, different things that parents can do with their kids. If they do at least one of those activities, then they get this fun printed piece. It's a, it's a glossy um, uh, thing that they can take home. It, the, originally, it was a calendar. We had a 60-month calendar. Then we, we moved over to just a printed piece. Uh, which we call Fun Guide, and it's we call it a a, um, a wordless picture book because the the illustrations are gorgeous with our build a reader animals, and we want kids looking at that and point. And we're going to um, plans to get stickers for that, and then along the side are um, activity suggestions for parents, things that they can do, early literacy tips, the things that we would say in story time where we try to communicate with parents when we talk with them about early literacy. Um, and those are all of our animals. Judy Webb is our creative director, I should say, and um, she, she hand created these um, and even crayon, if anything. But I want to say, again, it, I want to emphasize you don't need the fancy artwork. You really don't. It's the relationships you develop with parents and children um, that really matters and demonstrating how to support early literacy. The, all, that's what really matters. And I am very fortunate at Tulsa City County Library. I have some amazing children's librarians and children's library staff, and here are just some of them um, it, having fun and story time. Um, it, so it's it, it for that's what the important thing is developing staff and having ongoing learning and commitment and that you can have that with a staff of 50 and 24 libraries which is what we have or a staff of one and one library I mean that's that's where the rubber meets the road thank you great okay um i'm valerie kimball and um i have worked for oh a dozen years or more at the pioneer library system and uh just uh, like Tulsa, we got in on the ground floor of Every Child Ready to Read when ALA PLA rolled it out. And we developed a program. Um, at When it first started, it was very um, didactic, very much a teaching model. And so we wanted to soften that because uh, just like Tulsa, we wanted to impact parents' knowledge and parents' behavior. 
if you can, because as uh, Laura mentioned, uh, children's librarians, although we have these wonderful skills and wonderful programs, we only have contact on a very limited basis. Even if the children come every week to story time, it's what, 30 minutes, maybe 40 minutes if it's really a long story time. And the research shows that it's the one-on-one -on -one relationship and it's the repetition the, uh, that builds neural pathways in children's brains. So we needed to influence the parents to adopt reading every day. And we also wanted to give them the, the, not just the knowledge, but the skills. So of course we model them in story time and um, we also do the five practices, the um, read, write, talk, sing, play. Um, and we came up with uh, our own brand and I'm gonna bring up our web, well, before I do that, um, we, our brand is growing like a reed. And we, because we got in on the ground floor, we focus a lot on the early literacy skills, which is the first uh, emphasis of every child ready to read. And we simplified the language from, for instance, phonological awareness is sounds. So print awareness is direction. Print motivation is books. Narrative skills is story and vocabulary is words and letter knowledge is letters and numbers. So we, and we have um, stories from parents that it's so helpful. We still include the technical language, but um, for instance, on four-year-old report cards, those early literacy skill terms show up and we've had parents come back and say to us, oh, I'm so glad you told me what that meant. I wouldn't have known my child got to school. So uh, parents do appreciate it. And um, the other things that we gave give out, and um, like uh, Elizabeth and Stillwater, we have written many grants to support this program because we give the parents, we want the parents to have the tools they need to be their child's first teacher. So we give them a tote bag and it's branded with our Growing Like a Reed logo. And in it, we give them a board book. We give them a CD of nursery rhymes because we want the parents to read and sing. And we give them um, a stand-up book of nursery rhymes. And it's, they're in English and Spanish. And we provide activity logs. And these have both uh, developmental tips and activities and it's a it's a checklist they can and they are the different places where you can do these activities and basically it's everywhere and the different uh, early literacy skill that each relates to now something that we did early on so if you come in the library um, they're offered in story time there if we see a, a new person in the library with a, a baby or small children we offer the materials we might come up and say oh would you like a growing like a read bag here it is but something that seems to be of course the best way to market is word of mouth in a story time when the parents show up with that tote bag the other parents go well, where did you get that and the parents marketed to each other now. So um, it's, it's really wonderful. So they'll say things like, oh, the CD, my child loves the CD, or you know, page four of the stand-up book, I have to sing that every morning. So um, it, it, has, it has really been a wonderful success. But to get the word out beyond the typical advertising, and I'm gonna share my screen now, um, our virtual library digitized it. So Growing Like a Read has its own web page. And let's see. And here it is. And so I would invite you to go to the Pioneer Library System website. There's the URL up at the top, but it's kind of long. If you just Google Growing Like a Read, it will take you right here.
and we've got the banner of our new books. We've got um, films with story time demonstrations. The librarian actually demonstrating the, um, the rhymes, the songs, and all of that. But if you come over here, and um, I have uh, on th this, I'm pointing to the, let's see, I don't know, can you see my cursor where it says activity logs? These are the activity logs that we give out on paper, but there they are. They're available also online. And uh, so parents at home, they don't miss, uh-oh, what did I do? They, um, they don't have to come to the library to access it. They just have to, uh, I'm going to have to get back in here. One second. They can just print them off the um, library web page. Okay, we're back. The other things that are here are, it says more materials. This is the stand-up book. Let me see if I can do this without getting out of the program again. And so all the materials are on this page. Oh, I did it right this time. And uh, um, we also have, um, similar to what Laura said about going outside the library and also out, uh, what Elizabeth said, um, we, we realized that we were preaching to the choir. The parents who already brought their children to story time were already committed to early literacy. Well, we developed a, a very small um, version of um, the program into a little booklet, and um, we give it out to the hospitals in the area to put in the bags that the new newborn families take home. So we try and capture um, families right when the children are born. The, um, the other thing we do is, um, I'm ha everybody's face is right over, aha, there. Um, we have come up with all kinds of materials. They're all on the website. Here's our poster that parents can put up on the refrigerator and it has the uh, early literacy skills printed on it. We've got the um, songs of our CD and you can just, um, the music here, I, I apologize, I've got another meeting going on in the background. Um, and, we have bookmarks, but the thing that I really want to mention to you is our catalog searches. These are pre added, so if you're trying to plan a program or uh, a parent comes and says, do you have any books on sounds? You go here and there are pre-formatted searches that take you into our catalog. And um, we've added the um, Growing Like a Read um, terms to as subject headings. So sounds, rhymes, so. And I'm going through all of this to say to you, please use it. These things have been developed and we would love it if you share your families. Um, um, the more the merrier. We just ask that you not change the formats or take our, take our name off. But um, um, the program has been in place since 2009. We have written, oh, we've gotten three outside grants and our foundation at PLS is very supportive. We partner with uh, the local health departments and we, um, we do trainings for local daycare centers. So, um, we try very hard to get the word out and um, 
I'm trying to get back to Zoom, but there it is. Okay. Um, so, uh, like Elizabeth said, if you have questions, uh, feel free to contact me and um, I will be very glad to um, answer them, help you out. And again, feel free to use any of these materials. We're happy to share. Well, I am so excited. You all were so great and fantastic. Um, there's so many great things going on in the state. Um, Folio is very interested in helping any way we can get other libraries involved. And we'd love to have a statewide marketing campaign or um, help smaller libraries get started in um, early literacy projects. Folio, if you don't know about us, we're an all-volunteer organization, uh, and our mission is really to support and strengthen libraries in Oklahoma. And our website is at okfriends.net. We've done programs. You may have heard of things that we've done. Um, we were a co-sponsor on Reading Roundup, the author tours that happened for several years, and Let's talk about it, Oklahoma. We bought some books to make that successful. And we have a poetry contest uh, most every year. We didn't this year, but in uh, North Central Oklahoma to go along with our literary landmark, of uh, Wilma McDaniel um, there. So we started asking then, how can friends really help um, and give libraries ideas um, to inexpensively reach parents and caregivers in learning how important early literacy is. And um, one thing that really brought that home for us this spring was uh, we had this uh, logo or this on our website, our Facebook page, um, and we got lots of feedback. In fact, this is our first Facebook that actually went viral, we reached 3.8 million people in that face in the posting. We had 43,000 shares and 178 comments. Many of them were great comments. Grandparents loved sharing stories with their kids. Um, and that's, she's one of them said, that's why my kids are so smart as I read to them every day. Uh, and some of them said, I wish preschool teachers knew this. No books in schools, just computers. We need to start reading every night. Uh, we need to do better than this. And then someone said, this is where you went wrong. <laughs> so, oh, we had, we had all kinds of comments. But the point is, they don't know the importance of reading. And you all have talked about that importance. Here's a couple of studies. Um, by the age of three, children in middle and upper class families have heard words millions more times than those in lower income groups. And then one in three children um, aren't ready with the language skills when school, when they're ready to start school, according to the American Academy of Pediatrics. So there is a, a great need for uh, parents to be engaged and understand how important reading to their children early are. And of course, libraries are doing great things. They have story times, they have um, parent programs, they have books, of course, for children to have access to. And then of course, there are great organizations and you all have some great web pages with resources on them already. It's fantastic to find out about. So Melody Kellogg and Adrian Butler at the Department of Libraries and Ashley Welke, um, who was planning to start a, th a thousand books before kindergarten program at my South Oklahoma City Library locally. Um, and I met uh, last fall and we decided to do a survey just to see what was happening around the state. So we had 50 responses to the survey out of of what, 120 some libraries probably? Um, and 28 of the 50 responses already had some kind of preschool literacy program. 
uh, 14 were planning to and 14 were not planning to and one was interested in possibly starting and working with folio in a project and then of those who answered the survey that said they were already doing it in fact they said 76 percent said they were interested in participating in a statewide project if they receive more information possibly so um, i'm not uh, tied to 1000 books before kindergarten necessarily although it is a very flexible program it would be very easy for a really small library to start on a really small scale or it can be as complicated uh, as you want it to be uh, as you heard there are lots of great fabulous things going on in early literacy here in the libraries that we've talked about. Um, and of course, we're targeting then parents and caregivers. So it can be a parenting program. Uh, some libraries have uh, programs for parents separately. When I was at Metropolitan many decades ago, we don't have to talk about that, but um, we actually started a wooden toy library and we had, in order for them to check out the toys, they had to actually go to a training session about play and the importance of reading to children and that kind of thing. And so uh, we actually had a program just for parents uh, that came. And of course you can have prizes. As you heard the gamut, there's all kinds of prizes. And I think as Stillwater is doing, keeping them engaged, giving a prize every hundred books um, is a great idea. One library I read about has a party every six months um, just to keep parents involved. Uh, we could have, we could develop staff training that would be available for smaller libraries if they weren't aware of the importance of programming. And of course, I'm always into uh, let's see what pictures we can get. This is uh, from Wichita Public Library. The girl is so cute. They have a um, chart there that she stands in front of. And of course, I'm sure they got permission to utilize it. But um, I think we could all have retractable posters that could have this 1000 that they could stand in front of. It wouldn't take a lot of room in a small library, but could um, be a great photo op. Uh, so not all libraries would have a lot of room for a hall of a wall of fame which i think is a great concept but uh, we could do cooperative programming uh, there it looks like there is an interest group already on facebook but we might have a local one uh, there's some great web pages already out there that we could link to and provide information and then of course we could share program ideas and lesson plans as well so there's lots of possibilities. So I'm totally open to um, what you all would be interested in following up on and making a statewide project. Um, I think maybe getting together for those who that answered the survey and discussing what needs they have and identify the resources that are available. The, Oklahoma City Community Foundation actually has um, an iChild grant available every year, well many iChild grants available every year through the Kirkpatrick Foundation, um, and they are willing to stretch their guidelines a little bit and go to libraries in contiguous counties to metropolitan area. So we maybe could get a consortium of smaller libraries that aren't in library systems that don't have projects, that we could do that grant. And of course, uh, the Foundation Center uh, has list grants available um, from foundations. Right now, uh, the only access points I know, I know that Tulsa City County has it as one of their databases. And then Oklahoma City University is another contact point, but they're closed this summer. But of course, we can get in there eventually. Um, and then Oklahoma City uh, Community Foundation also administers a big grant fund for just southeastern Oklahoma, uh, which would be a good possibility for 
that. But I think sharing best practices, um, having parenting program ideas, I think those are all things that would be easy to, not necessarily easy, but doable and might be uh, helpful for smaller libraries. So I'm open to suggestions, ideas. Where do you think we should go? And we are we headed the right direction? Is there a need? You have any comments? I, I love I love all of the opportunities here, and I love the focus on um, on getting out just some very easy um, ideas, but that maybe parents haven't heard. Uh, would you t tell us a little bit more about what's the 21 day challenge? Did you talk? Okay, Read Aloud has a 21 day challenge they do every once in a while. They did it right before Christmas and they mm -hmm. did it again, I think it was in February. Um, but they just, every day then for 21 days, they put up a new um, thing on Facebook, a new graphic on Facebook, encouraging parents to read. Sometimes it's, you know, that increases their vocabulary. It teaches them small things so the okay. challenge is to is to read something is to read a book read every day, every day. For i mean i think idea. that that would be a terrific statewide kind of thing their to idea adapt. is 15 minutes every day and yes. it doesn't have to yes. be 15 minutes all at one time yes. it can be <laughs> some kids time here and there <laughs> oh, love to wiggle really, around right and and they have a lot of graphics that teach parents just little niblets about how important it is to read and increases vocabulary, increases attention span, expands. There's so many good, so many good resources out there. Mm -hmm. I guess that's my, my question for everybody would be what, what I, I love zero to three is probably my go-to for early literacy information, but there's so many different ones. What, what are some resources that you um, go to or that, that you, you really um, favor or would recommend? I, sorry, I jumped to asking questions. That's great. No, I think that's where we're at. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> well, yeah, so the 21 day challenge comes from readaloud.org. And mm -hmm. I almost always print off all their posters just yeah. to hang in our library. They're very, they're generally very attractive and um, ha usually do have a good parent tip or, you know, they're fun. They're cute, they're informational, and then I laminate them so I can reuse them. Um, and then, oh gosh, I, I need to look it up on the calendar, but there's another one every, there's one for babies. I'll have to, I'll have to send it in, but there's another one that has posters um, and their recommendation is to hang them up in next to changing tables. So get a really big print of this poster. It has parent tips um, when you put it by changing tables around town so that as they're you know, in those restrooms, changing the diaper, they're getting a few parent tips while they're there. So um, I, I just can't remember the exact title of where those ones come from. But they're also a free, you can print this um, poster. And, and for more digital, for more digitally inclined parents, there's an, there are a number of apps. So there's the Daily Vroom app, V-R-O-O-M. They have a, a, you sign up in for your kid's age and they give you just a, a thing to do every day. It's a very similar kind of, but you know, more the it's the parents looking at their smartphones, me getting a tip. My cat was signed up for a few years. <laughs> <laughs> she's out, she's outgrown daily room, but yeah. <laughs> We do put up uh, read aloud and other reading uh, things on our Facebook page at Folio, and we'd be happy for anyone to share those anytime. Oh, a lot of libraries do. Okay. Yeah, especially for smaller libraries, like even still are, we're just a one building, so we don't have a you know a dedicated marketing place. Being mm -hmm. able to sh quickly share a post is much easier than having to go and create it. So highly recommended to anybody who is, you know, librarian, collection development, social media manager, storyteller, all in one. <laughs> That's the best way to go. Sharing. Well, sh and sharing is a deeply held, you know, principle and value of a public library. So absolutely. And what, yeah. 
I'm going to put up um, everyone's contact information that presented today. So Great. our um, people at home can see that. So there's everybody's contact information. Um, if you want to get in touch with them uh, about some of the resources they shared or how they got started, um, those are there. And I just want to thank you guys, Elizabeth and Laura, Valerie and Sharon for um, talking to us about what's going on in your library um, and, and how you got started and things that you've learned and would do differently and, and whatnot. So um, if you uh, enjoyed this session, um, this session was sponsored by the Children and Teen Services Roundtable, which is just a division of OLA that um, puts together professionals who work with children and teens, and we just share best practices just like this um, of how to engage children, children and teens in um, our library. <laughs> So uh, please remember to complete a session evaluation in the OLA conference app, and we hope you will continue to enjoy, um, enjoy and join us for other conference sessions um, throughout these next few days um, online. So thank you again to our presenters for their time, um, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. <laughs>